we've shown that DNA is actually the software of life. It's totally interchangeable between the digital world and the biological world. The DNA code itself is so digital, is so almost exactly like uh, a computer tape. Totally interchangeable. The DNA code itself is the software of life. So digital. Scientists have come to the amazing conclusion that our bodies contain digital code. digital code. In fact, Bill Gates, you know, the founder of Microsoft, tweeted, DNA is more advanced than any software ever created. Ever created. Ever created. Think about it. A program or code is written by someone very smart. The more complex the code, the more intelligent the author has to be. So here's the question. If our DNA code is more complex than any man-made software, where did it come from? Is it possible it was authored without an author, authored without programmed a without a program? Programmed without a program. Materialists think so, through neo-Darwinism, the modern version of Darwinian evolution. Stephen Meyer, author of the New York Times bestseller, Darwin's Doubt, explains. According to neo-Darwinism, new genetic information arises as a result of random mutations in the arrangement of the nucleotide bases along the spine of the DNA molecule. If those random changes are beneficial, they're passed on and preserved, and if many such changes are preserved and passed on, they would accumulate over time and eventually result in a very significant change in the morphology, the form of the organism. That's like saying if this game had glitches every time it was copied online, and gamers shared their favorite mutated versions and trashed the rest, it would eventually turn into this. Come on, really? If we know the computer glitches won't produce a new video game, how much sense does it make to believe that glitches, copying errors, and our DNA code can produce new organisms? Could random mutations in DNA really produce this? 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 What about this? This, 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 or this. Everything we know about software shows that random changes in a section of functional code or functional information is going to degrade that information long before you ever get to something fundamentally new. And that's the problem with the mutation selection mechanism as an explanation for new genetic information. Information in DNA is also essentially typographic or digital. And there are far more ways to go wrong in arranging those characters than there are ways to go right. And so as you begin to randomly change them, you inevitably fall into a non-functional abyss long before you ever generate anything fundamentally new. So just how unlikely is it for random genetic changes to produce something new, even something as modest as a protein structure with a new function? One scientist performed experiments that enabled him to actually calculate the odds, and they aren't good. In fact, they're next to impossible. We caught up with a molecular biologist, Douglas Axe, in Seattle. In our lab work, we, we've asked how rare or how common functional proteins are within the space of possibilities. Doing experiments and calculations, we found that they're exceedingly rare, like one in 10 to the 74th power rare. To get a feel for those odds, imagine that somebody hid one atom somewhere within the Milky Way galaxy, and you, blindfolded by chance, are supposed to pick one atom and hope that it's the right one. Those odds would be better than the odds for the protein. Axe calculated the probability for all the chance mutations in all of the life forms on Earth for billions of years. And in all that time, he found they couldn't chance on even one new functional protein structure. Not one, zero. And keep in mind, it takes thousands of distinct proteins to build any kind of complex life, including humans. And many of these proteins are unique to each individual life form. So we go from improbable to basically impossible. The bottom line is that the mutation selection mechanism simply lacks the creative power to generate the new information necessary to build new organisms in the history of life. If the material processes of mutation and natural selection aren't capable of producing the biological information needed for life, then where did it come from? Our uniform and repeated experience, as Darwin himself pointed out, is the basis of all scientific reasoning about the past. So when we see information in a digital 
form in software, or we see a paragraph in a book, and we trace that information back to its source, we always come to a mind, not a material process. That's part of what we know from our observation of the world around us, that information always arises from an intelligent source. So we can apply that knowledge to the question of historical biology. And when we see that information is the foundation of life, we can infer that the best explanation for the origin of that information is in fact also a mind, a conscious agent, not an undirected material process. When presented with evidence that conflicts with neo-Darwinism, most scientists cling to a belief in the blind process of evolution, denying what science has discovered that at the foundation of life, there exists a code so complex and advanced that it defies chance. They make no room for the possibility that we were created by an intelligence far more sophisticated than the most genius of programmers. Instead, they choose to limit their investigation to a strictly materialist worldview. When faced with this evidence, how will you respond? We are not materialists. We see the human soul. We experience love. We live with purpose. We fight for justice. If you were designing a universe for life, I suspect you might design it differently. There is no evidence of design or purpose to our universe. I'm a speck, on a speck, orbiting a speck, amongst still other specks in the middle of specklessness. I am not. Are we really just insignificant specks in an accidental universe? Do we really just suck? Those are some dramatic claims, but not everyone thinks that way. In fact, some very distinguished scientists disagree. Freeman Dyson, a world-renowned physicist and mathematician, says, and I quote, The more I examine the universe and study the details of its architecture, the more evidence I find that the universe, in some sense, must have known that we were coming. So maybe it's not an accident that Earth is habitable. We caught up with physicist Bijan Namadi, who was a senior engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab for over 16 years. What we've discovered in the last few decades is that the properties of the universe in general and our planet in particular are fine-tuned not just for our survival but actually for our, our thriving our benefit so earth is not just habitable it's better than that it's hospitable it's like this imagine you're a space explorer and you land on a distant planet there's no water no oxygen and it's 300 degrees below zero you're screwed. But then off in the distance, you see a structure. And the closer you get, the more it looks like a house. When you open the door, you find it's been filled with warm, breathable air. You take off your spacesuit and find a faucet with drinkable water and a refrigerator stocked with healthy and delicious food. What's your first thought? The house and everything in it was the product of a mindless natural process? Or that it was designed to take care of you, to meet your needs? and that someone prepared it as a home for human beings, like you. Our planet, Earth, is that home. Our planet is a terrestrial planet. It has water and carbon, both necessary for life. It has an oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere in just the right proportion for life to thrive. We have plate tectonics to circulate minerals. We have a magnetosphere that protects us from harmful radiation. Our moon stabilizes our axial tilt, giving us a stable climate. And we have gas giant planets, particularly Jupiter, cleaning up the solar system from comets and asteroids that could harm us. And we are located in the habitable zone of a very stable energetic star, which itself is located in the habitable zone of a metal-rich mature galaxy. So the Earth is apparently exceedingly rare. There is no design or purpose to our universe. Still stuck on that? Even though the Earth meets exactly the conditions needed to sustain life? Well, what about our universe and the precise settings of its physical laws that keep things in order? What they call fine-tuning. 
cosmological physicist Frank Tipler explains. Fine-tuning in physics refers to the fact, the observed fact, that were we to modify the constants of nature just slightly, life would never appear in this universe. Imagine you have a universe app where you can mess with the universal laws of physics from the beginning of time. Starting with gravity, too strong and the stars would be unstable and deadly to life. Too weak and the stars would struggle to create carbon and oxygen. Again, no life. We got Stephen Meyer, who holds a PhD from Cambridge, to break it down. The force of gravity is not too strong, not too weak. The speed of light, not too fast, not too slow. The ratios of these fundamental forces are delicately balanced. It's the just right universe that makes life possible. So it's got to be exact. But materialists say we just got lucky with gravity. Now, let's set our universe app to random and tap the button. What are the chances that the app will luck onto a gravity setting that just happens to allow life to emerge? Scientists have crunched the numbers, and the answer? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say one out of a million. Actually, for gravity, it's worse. Worse than one chance in a billion, times a trillion, times a trillion. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Yeah! We all love rooting for long shots, but here's the thing. It's not just gravity. There are many other physical laws that also have to be just so for life to emerge in the universe. And some of them are even more fine-tuned, even more unlikely than gravity. Without fine-tuning, our universe would be a horror story even Stephen King couldn't imagine. The very construction of the world and the fact that we seem to be the only blue-populated planet in the universe it makes you have to believe that if we happen by accident, it would make winning the lottery look like flipping a coin. So I have a tendency to believe in intelligent design. Nobel Prize winning physicist Charles Towns seemed to agree by stating, and I quote, intelligent design, as one sees it from a scientific point of view, seems to be quite real. This is a very special universe. It's remarkable that it came out just this way. But of course, materialist scientists claim they have a better answer. There's an ob obvious and e easy naturalistic explanation in the form of the cosmological multiverse. The multiverse acknowledges that the conditions necessary to make life in this universe are incredibly improbable. But it posits the existence of multiple billions of other universes, and we just happen to be in that lucky universe. Keep in mind that there's no evidence that these other universes actually exist. There are no experimentally tested laws of physics telling us that these other universes exist. No evidence for leprechauns, no evidence for unicorns, no evidence for the existence of other universes with different values of these fundamental constants. And there's still another problem with the multiverse explanation. The new mechanisms that have been proposed as possible ways of generating new universes themselves require fine-tuning. So in order to explain the fine-tuning, you have to posit prior universe-generating mechanisms that themselves require fine-tuning. And so, in the end, you're left right where you started. Right, right where, where you started. started. The many aspects of nature that have been fine-tuned for life are overwhelming. All of this evidence shows you are not insignificant. You are not an accident. And you don't suck. Someone had you in mind. Someone had us all in mind. We are not materialists. We see the human soul. We experience love. We live with purpose. We fight for justice. We are the quiet majority.